My name is Annie Pacas and I'm doing the cell project on prokaryotes, eukaryotes, and viruses. And if you look over here, this is the, just a regular animal cell uh, with the nucleus, Golgi apparatus. These wires are the cytoskeleton. And that's the rough ER, smooth ER, mitochondria, vesicle, and you can just barely see over there, it's the vacuole. I'll get that into detail, but just let me introduce everything. This is a HIV virus. Iris, it has the little proteins that uh, shows that let's say allow to get into the cells, the DNA, a, a other proteins that protect it. And over here is a T, T4 virus. Iris, and, if, and once you see the whole thing, it looks like a giant spider. And the DNA is located at, at in there, that little purple stuff. Uh, and and that's how it injects into the into the into the cell. And here's a prokaryotic IX cell, which is relatively simple, just the DNA all over the place, a flagellum for movement, and and cilia to move. Now um, to get into detail with the eukaryotic virus. Uh, virus. Messed up. E eukaryotic cell. Mm -hmm. um, here is the nucleus where the DNA is contained and, and it sends out messages to the other parts of the cell. Uh, to show that uh, it copies the DNA, I did a one similar to the nucleus, except, as you can see, it's dark, it's dark blue, while the original nucleus is light blue, um, showing that it's a co the DNA is a copy, but not the exact thing. And here in the rough ER, uh, it's where the proteins are made. Proteins are made by amino acids, which are these tiny little pictures right there. And the little white things are ribosomes, um, which it's taken the amino acids and and when they combine a certain number of them, they make a proteins. And here's the mitochondria, where it shows glucose, oxygen, carbon carbon dioxide, water, and ATP. Glucose and water comes in and with the oxygen breaking apart at the glucose was resulting in water, CO2, and ATP. And the ATP is used for the, en for the energy of the cell. Also, the cell could work and we can move. Here's the Golgi apparatus where proteins and once they're made in the rough ER, uh, go so they can be packaged and sent to another part of the cell. Oh, like that one right there. Yeah. And the smooth ER, which is that, the whole red part right there, uh, is demonstrated by this clear little plastic bag. And it's supposed to show how it breaks down toxins because I use liquid soap in there. So if any bacteria, virus, or any waste got in there, it'll be cleaned up and destroyed. And this little thing that is showing recycling, that's a lysosome. Um, what it does is takes the what is unnecessary to the other cells and puts them together so the cell could use it. And here, this this little unnoticeable thing right there is the vacuole. The vacuole contains all the water and enzymes in, in the cell. Um, although this is not uh, uh, it's a scale, it's pretty, pretty good because it doesn't hold as much water as a plant cell would. And last but not least is the is the cell membrane. And I use the, um, what's it called? It's like a strainer, isn't it? Uh, yes, yeah, a strainer, in a, as the um, as the main as the cell membrane, because it allows only some things to go through, but not everything, as demonstrated right here. Yeah. And usually, know, like, like like small things, huh? Yeah, small things, not too too big things. Mhm. Mm like, as demonstrated right here with the cell membrane, and there's active and passive transport. The passive allows just things to go through without using any energy, like oxygen, 
in which is diffusion, and water, which is osmosis, which higher concentrations is go to much lower concentrations. And there's also the ion pump, um, which brings in charged particles that is usually rejected by the normal cell membrane. And there's facilitated diffusion, which allows bigger things to get in. Just let's pretend this, for a moment this is glucose. It comes in and goes to the cell membrane. The cell membrane moves around a little bit and allows the glucose to get in. Same thing when it's coming out. It just moves along and it, gets, it goes out. And there's the active transports, which is transportation that needs energy. As such, right here with the ATP and the exocytosis and endocytosis. And I'll just demonstrate in a moment. Here with ATP, proteins go oh, in and out of, out of that tube because they need much more force to get in. And here, with exocytosis, it's demonstrated with this little bowling ball marble. Marble is too big to go to any other means. So what it does is that it fuses with the cell membrane for a while, and then it just comes out. Uh, that's endocytosis. Exocytosis is the same thing, except it's going outside the cell. And now let's move on to the virus right here. And this is an HIV virus. Anyways, the DNA is stored right in here. And this is a protein code that protects the DNA. They're considered not alive because they don't do any of the basic uh, things of a li living organism, which is eat, eat excrete waste, breathe, or anything. And and here, these are the uh, little proteins that actually actually get into the cell because the cell thinks it's a friend. But it's completely wrong right there. So I'll demonstrate in a moment. Okay. With this T4 virus. Okay. Which, this is a similar similar to the one right here. But I'll get into detail into that in a moment. This little virus is getting in to the cell and injects its DNA in. Injects its DNA. A, the rest of the body just goes out and, dis, and dissipates, but the DNA stays in there. Yeah? And to go to the eukaryotic, just to be more specific. Here, the DNA gets into the cell, goes to the nucleus, and just hijacks the, the nucleus, telling the cell that it wants to make more copies of itself. So then the cell is working hard just to make more copies of it. That in turn, it just destroys all the organelles. And once all the organelles are destroyed and there's nothing else to make more, more viruses with, they all, oh God, they all explode out. Well, it's going to infect other cells. And um, as I said earlier, this is a T T4 virus, which right here it's the head, and, and inside is DNA. And the DNA is injected when these little legs right here stick onto a cell, and the needle injects it into it, in, into the cell, the DNA, through this tube, Oop, and that's how it gets out. Uh, usually the cause of most of these viruses are usually the cause of some of the most deadliest diseases to mankind. And biggest example is smallpox. That usually will cause as warts, or as blisters, as horrible rash, and you'll be dead uh, within, uh, well actually I can't really say in a week, because some people will last longer. It's actually Actually, 40% of the people that got infected with it died, but m most of the people that survived got scarred and blinded, and, and that causes so many problems. It was eliminated in 1977, and then after, after it caused so much dis dis destruction to the human race for 
uh, tens of thousands of years. Yes, and it was eliminated to cow cowpox, which is a much weaker version of the virus. Uh, this, the cow cowpox were, uh, was also the first vaccine, and the WHO, the World Health Organization, eradicated by by uh, vaccinating everyone and, and destroying and quarantining the the infected so that the disease cannot be continued any longer. Now we move on to the last one here, which is the prokaryotic cell. Um, the prokaryotic is fairly simple. It has a cell, cell membrane, cell wall, and these and the fur right here is supposed to represent cilia, which helps it to stick up to surfaces and move. But the main thing that helps it move here is the flagellum, which just which lets it move by spinning around in circles. Uh, uh, similar to how sp sperm move. Oof. And here, the orange stuff is the, is the DNA. It's just, it just spread it out everywhere. Uh, because it has no nucleus where it can just keep it in one place. And prokaryotics are known to live in, every, in almost every kind of condition, from the, um, from the hottest to the coldest, hottest to the um, most hospital, hospitable to the least hospitable. It's, and this is a bad thing, because as if pro prokaryotics are in the two kingdoms, bacteria and archaea. Um, and if prokaryotes can live anywhere, so can bacteria. Yeah, and ba bacteria ha are, are really a nuisance, but can actually be destroyed through medications. One such disease was tuberculosis, which was bacteria that infected your lungs and, and would cause you to slowly die to death. If you were untreated, you would die. The chances of you living were 50-50. And the tuberculosis is it's not much as a problem as it was before, but it's, it's starting to be a growing problem because it's being antibiotic resistant. Antibiotics destroy the cell wall of the, of the bacteria, causing water to flood in and cause it to pop, which, as we know, is what happens with osmosis. But, as they're going, but this is sort of a example of evolution, because the, the weaker bacteria are being destroyed, and the more antibiotic resistant are, le are staying over, and these are the ones that are causing problems to doctors today.